In the world of AI-generated art, there are a lot of extremely powerful tools and the technology gets better every single day. I've already covered and done a video on Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion, which if you haven't seen those, go ahead and check those out. But today we're gonna talk about the basics of using Adobe Firefly. The reason that a lot of people are interested in and have their eyes set on Firefly is that it's created by Adobe. They are a huge player in the creative industry making Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere, which is what I edited this video on, and a lot of other software. So a lot of people, including myself are excited to see what Firefly can do. Now in this video, we're gonna go over just the basics of Firefly and what it can do. If you want more information on it, including advanced techniques, go down into the video description below. There's a blog article that covers it more in depth if you want more than just the basics. But let's check it out. So there are two ways that you can use Firefly currently, inside of Photoshop's beta client, or you can use the web client. We're gonna go through the web client today as that's the way most people are probably gonna be using Firefly and it's the easiest, but you can use both things similarly between the two different clients. So to check out Firefly, you just need to go to firefly.adobe.com, that's the URL, and then you can see the Firefly homepage. So currently on Firefly's website, there are four supported different tools that you can use. There's text to image, generative fill, text effects, and generative color. And then next to this, this is going to be continually changing all the time, but these are the things that are in exploration. So today we have 3D to image and extend image. I'm not going to cover these because they are in exploration and they're not tools that we can currently use, but we're going to check out these and show you how they work. So here is the text to image homepage. And this will show you some sample prompts that you could check out. So if we wanted to see this one, we can try one out or on the very bottom, you can type in what you want to generate yourself. This works like a lot of AI generators already out there. You type in the prompt and it'll generate an image based on the prompt that you choose. We'll just select this one here because I think it looks cool and it's already done for us. But we can see that this here is an isolated iron lighthouse shining out to the sea, yada, yada, yada. And it goes out and explains what the prompt is. If you go over here to the right, there's the generate button. So if we change this and added things to it, we can click generate and that would change it up. So if I wanted to change the prompt a little, I changed it to a lighthouse in a sci-fi setting, orange and blue sky, rainy weather, dragons flying around, hit generate, and then it generates the image for us. You can make this whatever you want, hit generate, and then it'll make it for you. Now, if we go over here to the top right, here's where you can change your aspect ratio. So you can do landscape, portrait, square, widescreen, vertical, whatever you want, you can just change it here and it'll change the aspect ratio for you automatically, which is really, really cool. And you can see it automatically did this. So then we have content type here. These are the different image styles that you can use. So either none, photo, graphic, or art. Here's where you can further customize your image. And these are these styles that are available. Currently there are 63 different options that are in seven different categories. So we can change the materials, the effects, techniques, movements, concepts, themes. So if I wanted to change the movements here to science fiction, we could generate that and have it do a science fiction based version of our image. The science fiction one, which I think we already said science fiction. No. Oh yeah, we did sci-fi. So it's already pulling that from the title or we could change it here. We'll just do cyberpunk so you can see the difference right away. Now down here is your color and tone, your lighting and your composition, which my face is in the way. Let me remove my face real quick so you can see that. You have color and tone, lighting and composition. And here you can change these uh, to whatever you want them to be to even further customize your image. So if we want this to be black and white, we can do that. If we wanted to change the lighting, the composition we can do all that so let's do a cool tone we'll change the lighting to dramatic lighting composition we'll do blurry background and we'll regenerate it and here you can see what it's created so here these are the very basics of text to image generation and just the starting tools uh, jump in here, play around with it because there's a lot you can do. It gets really, really fun. Now, if you're looking for more tips and tricks and some more advanced concepts when using this, go again down into that video description, check out the blog article. It's got a lot more than I'm gonna go over in this video today. This is just the basics. But let's go back. So that's everything about text to image and let's check out generative fill. So generative fill is a tool that allows you to erase backgrounds or add in painting to your images. So we'll just select this one right here for an example. And you can see now the generative fill options. So over here on the left, you have insert, remove and pan. Insert is for adding elements, remove is for moving, pan lets you move around. So I'm gonna use this picture of a lighthouse again because I guess we're on lighthouse theme. I'm gonna show you how cool this is. So let's go to insert and let's go to add. We're gonna add something here and then you describe what you want to generate. So let's put in birds and generate. Now we have options to add birds into our image, which is really, really cool. Let's go ahead and keep that. Uh, let's add something here and let's add something ridiculous. A moon made out of cheese. Generate that. And now we have a cheese moon which is awesome and we're just gonna keep that. Now, if we wanna remove things, we can go to the remove section and let's go ahead and we can just remove stuff we don't want. Let's get rid of this here lighthouse because now it's not a lighthouse picture. We'll click remove and we'll do some thinking on how to remove that lighthouse for us. And here are some different options it has to change that for us. So let's, yeah, we'll keep this here. Instead of the regular lighthouse, we'll just have this concrete 
here. And you can see you can play around with this and do a lot of crazy fun stuff. Uh, this is one you definitely want to play with. It's better to just use it for yourself rather than me explain it all. But you can see how powerful it is already. So let's go back here to the home and let's talk about text effects. This one's also very cool. So text effects are much like the text to image that we played with, but this is for effects just on your text. So you can see this is pizza, turning your words into pizza or peacock feathers, driftwood, uh, the golden, let's do the gold dripping paint. It's really cool. So here it works pretty easy. Down on the bottom left here where my cursor is, you just type in what you want it to say and then you give it a prompt. So let's do, we'll do Divi and let's change this to purple and blue dripping paint on copper metal. I'll generate that and you can see what it created. So when you check these out, you can change kind of how they look. They give you a few options. Um, you can change the font itself, background color, color here. Let me move my face again real quick. You can see there's different color options, some sample prompts. Uh, there are a lot that you can mess with here. And so you have a lot of options here and really it, it this one's really fun. Again, just play with it. Your imagination is the only limitation you have with these text effects. It's a, it's a blast. And then we'll check out the last one. This is generative recolor. This one's pretty simple and is exactly how it sounds. This is a recoloring tool for artists. So we have this cat picture here uh, and we can just kind of change it to how we want. So let's, there's some samples here. You can change the colors down here where my face is at. Again, let me move my face. So there's some samples down here. Um, you can kind of change things. And this one works really quickly and it's pretty obvious to see how it works and what it does. Uh, but this one's really cool, especially if you do have like a product logo or something that you're wanting to see different variations of, you can throw it in here um, and just kind of see how it works. If you look on the top right, you can upload your own SVG file and then you can kind of recolor it from there. So very powerful, very cool. Tool. So there you have the basic overview of Adobe Firefly. There are some things that really make it stand out and some stuff I really love about it. Uh, it is incredibly quick how fast it makes images and the level of customizability and detail that they give is just, in, it's amazing. Um, some of the stuff that I was creating with this when I was you know, learning for the tutorial just blew me away. Uh, and I have a lot of good things to say about it and I really enjoy Firefly. Now, again, there are a lot of different tips and tricks for you down in the blog article below. So if you wanna learn more about Firefly and the different stuff you can create with it, check that out. But that's everything that I have for you in this quick overview. Thank you so much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it. Before you go though, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. We we have a lot of different content coming out, especially stuff that's in regards to AI content because it is super exciting and awesome. So if you want more tutorials, some of the best tools you can use, make sure you follow our channel so you don't miss out and we'll see you in the next video.